Did you know that there's a satirical version of the Nobel Prizes? The name is the Ig Nobel Prizes and the idea behind them is they honour achievements that first make people laugh and then make them think. Some of the examples include how holding a crocodile influences gambling and how to hold a coffee cup best for the least spillage. Today we're going to learn a little bit more about these prizes and take a look at some winners. So let's dive straight into it. The Ig Nobel Prizes were created in 1991 by Mark Abrahams, who is the editor and co-founder of the Annals of Improbable Research, which is a bi-monthly magazine devoted to scientific humour. Awards presented at that time were for discoveries that cannot or should not be reproduced. Ten prizes are awarded each year, including the categories that we see in the Nobel Prizes, which are physics, chemistry, medicine, literature, economics and peace, but we also see additional categories such as public health, engineering, biology and interdisciplinary research. Something I find very interesting is there has actually been one person who has received both an Ig Nobel Prize and a Nobel Prize as well. This was given to Sir Andre Geim, apologies if I pronounced that incorrectly, for his work on levitating a frog by magnetism. So he actually won the Ig Nobel Prize first in 2000, and this was for the prize in physics, and then he later went on to win an actual Nobel Prize in 2010, and he's the only person to have won both of these awards. In this video, I want to take a look at some of the winners and we're going to start strong with the fluid dynamics of cats. Now, if you've watched my channel before, you'll know that I specialised in fluid dynamics and it just so happens that I also love cats. So this is a great one to start with. Now, you might be thinking the fluid dynamics of cats, what does that actually mean? So let's break it down now. So it was actually a French researcher who won the Ig Nobel Prize in Physics after using maths to work out whether a cat is a liquid or a solid. Now he said, and I quote, it was based on the common definition that a liquid is a material that can adapt its shape to its container. And he goes on to say that under certain conditions, cats do indeed fit this description. And here is the paper that he published called On the Rheology of Cats. Let's first start with the basics. What is a liquid? By definition, a liquid is a material that can adapt its shape to fit a container, just like I mentioned but there's a catch here, and it's that this doesn't happen instantly. You might notice that liquids take time to flow into place. And in rheology, we call this what is known as the relaxation time. And this is the time that it takes a material to adapt its form to external forces. Now here's the twist. If you give cats enough time, they do indeed adapt their shape to the container that they are in. And so under this definition, we can say that Given enough time, cats can also do this and therefore they are a liquid. Sounds crazy, but it's actually pretty true. So technically cats are liquids, but only if you give them enough time to become a liquid. This brings us to a really big question in rheology, and that is what determines the relaxation state? Is it the age of the cat in this instance? Is it the stress level of the cat? Is it the container? Well, in science, these are actually real research questions. So some fluids become thinner as the rate of shear increases. These fluids are referred to as shear thinning or thixotropic fluids. An easy example to use is ketchup. So if you want to get it out of the bottle, you have to give it a shape. The more stress that is applied, the thinner the fluid becomes. Some fluids behave in the opposite way, where the viscosity increases with the rate of shear. These are called shear thickening or dilettante. So cream in is an example of that, and it's also called a rheopeptic fluid. Its viscosity increases with stress over time, so the longer that you whip it for, the thicker it becomes. Does stress make a cat more shear thickening, which means it takes longer to relax, or shear thinning, where it relaxes faster? And no, in this example, we're not talking about the emotional state of the cat, although with cats, who knows? So we've covered the relaxation time of the cat, but it turns out there's actually two features that help us determine whether a cat is liquid or not. We have the relaxation time, like we just mentioned, but then we also have what is known as the experimental time. 
Now, the experimental time is basically how long we've been observing the material, or the cat in this instance, for. And we can compare both of these timescales to determine whether a cat is indeed a liquid or not. Now, the ratio between the relaxation time and the experimental time is what is known as the Debra's number. If the Debra number is greater than one, then the material behaves more like a solid, but if it's less than one, it behaves more like a liquid. So we can calculate both the relaxation time and the experimental time when observing cats to determine whether they are solid or liquid. For those of you that have studied fluid dynamics, you might be familiar with a number called the Reynolds number. Now the Reynolds number in this case helps us figure out if the flow will be smooth or laminar or chaotic or turbulent. And so this number was also used in the paper. Now you might think that this sounds like an actual joke that we are doing the fluid dynamics of cats, but it is real research and there's further research to go with this. The paper itself finishes by saying, in conclusion, much more work remains ahead, but cats are proving to be a rich model system for rheological research, both in the linear and non-linear regimes. Sounding questions include the potential implications of the rheology of cats on their writing reflex and whether the non-linear self-sustaining mechanism for turbulence in pipe is applicable to streaks of tigers. Very recent experiments from Japan also suggest that we should not see cats as isolated fluid systems, but as able to transfer and absorb stress from their environment. Indeed, in Japan, they have cat cafes where stressed out customers can pet kitties and purr their worries away, which is a fantastic way to end a paper. Now, I might be slightly biased in saying that this is one of my favorite Ig Nobel prizes, obviously because I love fluid dynamics, but there are so many more that have been awarded over the last however many years it's been running since 1991 and i'll put a link in the description to a page where you can find all of the awards since 1991. Some of the other Ig Nobel Prizes that I found really really cool were one in physics and this was by a group of researchers for discovering that some people would be physically capable of running across the surface of a pond if those people and that pond were on the moon. Again I love space so I really really enjoyed this one. Then there was also a prize that was awarded for the Arctic on science and two researchers basically tested how reindeer react to seeing humans who were disguised as polar bears. Great research paper again. We also have one in medicine by a group of researchers for treating uncontrollable nosebleeds using the method of nasal packing with strips of cured pork. So they quite literally used strips of cured pork and put them up people's noses to cure nosebleeds. And in this case, there were studies that it actually worked for. So if you're interested, then I'll put the link to that one in the description as well. Now, another and final one that I found really cool were two researchers for their experiments to see how contact with a live crocodile affects a person's willingness to gamble which again is a fantastic read. I'll link it in the description. Now, if you want me to do a deep dive on any of the specific Ig Nobel prizes, I can go into even more detail in the actual maths behind the fluid dynamics of the cats or any other, there are countless. So if you want me to do a video on them and do the actual maths and do a deep dive, then comment them down below and I'll do my best to create a video on those. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you all in the next one.